Hi everyone, this is Homer. I'm glad you're here to watch another Math 21 video. And our topic for this one is area of a plane region and arc length. Ayan, so here is a list of examples we will be discussing in this video. Yung first half, area of the plane region, and then second half, arc length. So now is the time to pause the video kasi I am suggesting na you try to answer all these examples first on your own before proceeding to the next part of the video where we will be discussing the solutions. Okay, so I hope you try to answer these problems kasi now we will start with the first example. Find the area of the triangle whose vertices are the points negative 1, 4, 2, negative 2, and 5, 1. Okay, so let's start with graphing the points para makita natin kung ano yung tsura ng triangle. So ito yung points na nag-graph natin and then connecting them with the line segments. As you can see, nilabelin natin as A, B, and C. So ang form nila ay isang triangle. And yung area ng triangle na to ang gusto natin makuha yung measure. So, kunin na muna natin ang equations of the line for A, B, and C. So, dahil A ang nag-connect sa 2, negative 2, and 5, 1, apply lang natin yung two-point form to get the equation of the line. So, Equation for the line A is y equals yung slope. Now compute natin sa difference ng y coordinates y minus negative two, then difference ng x coordinates five minus two. So our slope is one times x minus x coordinate from one of the points. So pinili natin yung 2, negative 2, so x minus 2, and then minus 2 here. So, ang equation of the line for a is y equals x minus 4. So, gawin natin yung same thing for b and c. compute natin na for b, equation of the line is y equals, so, yung slope, and then plug in negative 1 and 4, we get y equals negative 2x plus 2. And then for C, y equals, slope is negative 1 half. Ayan. So simplify natin, y equals negative 1 half x plus 7 halves. So, ngayon na may uh, equation of the line na tayo for A, B, and C, alam na natin kung ano yung gagamitin function para mag-set up ng definite integral. However, makapansin natin, na yung triangle ay hindi ganoon kadaling mag, mag set up ng definite integral. Meaning, meron pa tayong isang step na kailangan daanan, yun ay yung paggawa ng subregions. So, bakit natin kailangan gawa ng subregions? Kasi, like for example, kapag gagamit tayo ng vertical rectangles, Sa part na to, gagamitin natin yung, yung equation for C and then sa part minus equation for B. Right? Para ma-measure yung height ng vertical rectangle. Pero pagdating sa part na to, yung mga ve vertical rectangle natin, magamit naman na equation for C and then yung equation for A. So, kailangan natin hatiin dito sa x equals 2. So, meron tayong dalawang subregion, r1 and r2. Okay? So, kasi kung vertical rectangles yung pipiliin natin, ganyan yung pag-divide ng subregion. Kung mag-horizontal mag rectangles tayo, sa ang axis natin i-divide sa y equals 1. So, sa line na y equals 1, magkakaroon tayo ng isang subregion here for the 
horizontal rectangles sa taas and then horizontal rectangles sa baba. Okay? So, dahil vertical rectangles tayo, let's start with computing the area for R1. Ang area for R1 ay bounded between x equals 1 and x equals 2. So, yun yung bounds ng definite integral. And then, yung height ng vertical rectangle, kukunin lang natin from this uh, equation. So, this equation of the line can serve as a function, di ba? Na nag-represent ng curve. So, yung function ay negative 1 half x plus 7 halves. And then, minus natin sa function na makuha sa equation for b. So, negative 2x plus 2. So, simplifying, negative 1 half x minus negative 2x is uh, ano yun? 3 halves x. And then, 7 halves minus 2 is 3 halves. So, we get 3 halves x plus 3 halves. And then, integrate, we get 3 fourths x squared plus 3 halves x. And then, we have to evaluate dun sa bounds, x equals negative 1 to x equals 2. So, paano nga ulit mag-evaluate? Sa bounds, isa-substitute lang natin yung 2 and then minus when we substitute negative 1. So, we get 3 plus 3 when we substitute 2 and then the minus natin sa mga kuha when substitute negative 1 so 3 fourths minus 3 halves pero times negative 1 pa kasi yung minus ka natin so we get 3 plus 3 minus 3 fourths plus 3 halves that is 6 and 3 fourths or 6.75 square units now ito pa lang yung area for R1 how about for R2? For R2, ang bounds ay from x equals 2 to x equals 5. And then gamitin yung equation for C and equation for A. So we get this integral. Simplifying, negative 1 half x minus x is negative 3 halves x. And then 7 halves minus negative 4 is 15 halves okay and then we integrate we get negative 3 fourths x squared plus 15 halves x evaluated sa bounds natin x equals 2 and x equals 5 so that is ayan so verify yung computation natin when we substitute 5 we get negative 75 over 4 plus 75 over 2 and then minus when we substitute 2 so we get here 3 so minus negative 3 that's plus 3 and then minus 15 halves times 2 that is 15 lang. ayan so solving this negative 75 over 4 plus 75 halves plus 3 minus 15 we get also 6.75 square unit so itong dalawang triangle na pala to R1 and R2 ay equal ng measure in area so to get the area of the entire triangle i lang natin yung nakuha natin areas from R1 and R2 so 6.75 plus 6.75 is equal to 13.5 square units yan yung hinahanap natin area of the triangle describes the problem Okay, so I hope that's clear. Go to the next example. Find the area of the trapezoid whose vertices are the points negative 1, 1, 2, 2, 6, 2, and 7, negative 1. So, a little bit similar sa previous problem, pero this time trapezoid, which has four points. So, i-graph natin yung four points. Tingnan natin kung anong itsura ng trapezoid na yun. There we go. Meron tayong trapezoid. And then, kinonect na natin yung points and label the line segments A, B, C, and D. Okay, so... Yung area na nasa loob ng line segments na yan, yung kailangan natin i-measure. Again, let's get 
the equations of the lines A, B, C, D for A that is siya yung nagko-connect sa negative, neg negative 1, negative 1 and 2, 2 so we get using the two point form the equation of the line for A is Y equals X okay, for B ang Ang line na yan ay, it's just a horizontal line. So that is y equals 2. For c, apply ulit yung 2 point form. Compute the slope, plug in a point. So we get y equals negative 3x plus 20. Okay? And then for d, another horizontal line. So that is y equals negative 1. Okay, so... Let's try kung magbe-vertical rectangles tayo sa problem na to. Mapapansin nyo na hindi tayo pwede mag-setup ng iisang definite integral for the entire trapezoid. Kasi dito, kailangan natin yung A and D. Pero pagdating dito, kailangan natin yung B and D. And then dito, C and D naman. So mapapansin nyo, kailangan natin ng tatlong subregion kapag mag-vertical rectangles. So, R1 ay from negative 1 to 2, R2 from 2 to 6, and R3 ang bounds ay 6 and 7. So, ito yung three subregions na to get the entire area of the trapezoid, kunin lang natin, i-add lang natin yung nakukuha nating area sa R1, R2, and R3. So, let's start with R1. Ang bounds for R1 is negative 1 and 2. So, ang definite integral natin ay ito. From A, y equals x, and then B, y equals D, y equals negative 1. So, x minus negative 1 lang siya. So, simplifying, that's x plus 1, integrating x, 1 half x squared plus x, evaluating from negative 1 to 2. So, what do we get? 2 plus 2 minus 1 half plus 1. So, add lang natin lahat yan. We get 4.5 square units for, for R1. How about for R2? Paano natin isi-set up yung definite integral for R2? So, ang bounds ay 2 to 6. And then, i-minus lang natin yung function for B and function for D. So, 2 to 6, yung B is 2 and then D is negative 1. So, 2 minus negative 1. This is just a constant 3. Integrating, we get 3x evaluated from 2 to 6. That is 3 times 6 minus 2. So, finactor out ko na lang agad yung, yung x, no? Kaya siya naging 3 times 6 minus 2. But, again, 3 times 4, which is equal to 12. Na, actually, mapapansin nyo nga na itong r2, this is just a rectangle. And from the vertices kaya nating ma-compute yung yung area even without using a definite integral kasi di ba compute natin yung rectangle makikita natin na ang length is 4 and then ang width is 3 so that's just area is equal to 3 times 4 so same here sa so nakuha natin 3 times 4 12 okay so pwede yung i-compute yung area for R2 as a rectangle or pwede nyo pa rin gamitan ng definite integral. So, either way, nakuha natin yung area for R2. So, both are valid and both are consistent with each other. And then for R3, so, ang bounds natin ay 6 to 7 and then Nagamitin natin yung function for C, negative 3x plus 20 minus, this is just a horizontal line yung D, so minus negative 1. So, meron tayong 
uh, function sa loob ng integral na negative 3x plus 21. So, integrating, we get negative 3 halves x squared plus 21x. Now, we have to evaluate that from 6 to 7. Substituting 7 and then minus when we substitute 6. So, we get negative 147 halves plus 147 plus 108 over 2 minus 126 so so i-add na lang natin tong buong ito we get 1.5 square units para sa area ng R3 so for the total area ng trapezoid area A is equal to area from R1 area from R2 area from R3 the sum of those three so 12 plus 4.5 plus 1.5 is equal to 18 square units. So yun, that is if we use vertical rectangles. I'm sure ba, naisip nyo na na parang mas madali kung mag horizontal rectangles na lang. Hindi na kailangan mag subdivision. Kasi, yun nga, hindi na kailangan mag subdivision. Dahil ang gagamitin lang na na equation of the line ay C minus yung 4A. Kasi, tapos ang bounds yan ay Y equals negative 1 and then Y equals 2. Okay? So, tingnan natin. Let's try to solve yung area ng trapezoid na to using horizontal rectangles. So, in solving the area of the plane region using horizontal rectangles, kailangan natin yung functions are in terms of y. So, yung gagamitin natin, sulat natin as x in terms of y, Dito sa A, wala naman difference kasi yung equation of the line ng A is Y equals X siya. Pero for C, mapansin natin na iba siya, Y equals negative 3X plus 20. If we write it as X in terms of Y, the same equation becomes X equals negative 1 third times the quantity Y minus 20. Kailangan in terms of Y tayo kasi ang bounds for the definite integral ay nasa Y from negative 1 to to 2. And then, yung height ng rectangle ay yung difference ng function sa C and function sa A. Pero yung function na yun in terms of Y. Okay, so kung gagamit tayo ng horizontal rectangles, ang definite integral for the area of the trapezoid ay ito lang siya. Iisa lang, hindi na natin kailangan ng subregion. So yung bounds from negative 1 to 2 and then yung function for C minus function for A. So, that's negative 1 third times the quantity y minus 20 minus y. Let's simplify. Negative 1 third y minus y is negative 4 thirds y. So, integrate natin yun. Yun ay magiging negative 2 thirds y squared. Okay? And then, yung natira dito na 20 over 3. Integrating that, we get 20 over 3 y. So, na-evaluate natin sa bounds on y na negative 1 to 2. So, let's substitute yung 2. Ano man kuha natin? Negative 8 thirds plus 40 thirds. When we substitute negative 1, so, ima minus pa natin yun. So, minus negative 2 thirds. So, that's positive 2 thirds. And then, minus negative 20 over 3. That's, so, that's plus 20 over 3. So, solve na natin yung mga yon. Ang makuha natin is Ano ba to? 40 minus 8, 32, plus 2, 34, plus 20, 54 over 3 is equal to 18. So, ang area nito ay 18 square units. Now, that's consistent from what we have solved kanina using vertical rectangles kasi ang nakuha rin natin ay 18. And, dapat same sila ng makukuha na area kasi this is the same figure. 
kinuha lang natin yung area in using two different methods using vertical rectangles and now using horizontal rectangles so it turns out na mas madali using horizontal rectangles kasi hindi na kailangan mag-divide into subregions okay so kailangan natin identify uh, upon seeing the plane region kung ano yung best way to solve using vertical rectangles ba or using horizontal rectangles okay so punta na tayo sa next example Find the area of the region bounded by the upper branch of the parabola x equals y squared, the tangent line to the parabola at 1, 1, and the x-axis. Okay, so let's first graph yung parabola x equals y squared. So this is a parabola facing the right with vertex at the origin. So let's graph that. And then yung x-axis, graph na rin natin. Kulang na lang yung tangent line to the parabola at 1, 1. So, paano natin yan i-graph? Kunin muna natin yung, yung equation of the line, yung tangent line to the parabola at 1, 1. So, paano natin gagawin yun? Kunin natin yung first derivative. Dito, first derivative ng parabola. Kasi di ba yung first derivative ng parabola, binibigay niya yung slope ng tangent line at a point. So, kung kunin natin first derivative, so, dito ang pinili kong kunin form ng derivative is dx dy. So, kasi x in terms of y. So, we get dx over dx dy is equal to 2y and dun sa point na 1, 1, y equals 1. So, ang dx dy is 2. So, ang equation of the tangent line natin ay x equals yung slope na 2 times, plug in natin yung point 1, 1. y minus 1 plus 1. So, simplifying, ang equation of the tangent line is x equals 2y minus 1. Now, if dito, pinili nyo yung isolve yung dy dx, pwede naman ang makukuha nyo here using implicit differentiation dy dx is equal to 1 over 2y. And then at 1, 1, dy dx is equal to 1 half. So, yung makukuha yung equation of the tangent line, y equals 1 half times the quantity x minus 1 plus 1. Plug in and then simplify, you get y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. Pero actually, it's just the same as this. But yun lang yung other form ng equation that is when y is expressed in terms of x. Ito naman, x in terms of y. And actually, mas maganda to kasi magagamit natin later kapag mag-horizontal rectangles tayo. Anyway, hindi pa tayo sure kung vertical or horizontal. Okay, so, kaya, kaya na natin i-graph yung, yung tangent line using this equation. So, ito siya. It passes through the x-axis at the point negative 1, 0. And then, yun nga, tangent siya dito sa parabola sa point na 1, 1. So, after nyo mag-graph, makikita nyo na yung region bounded by the upper branch of the parabola. And then, yung tangent line. And then, yung x-axis. So, ito yung area of the region that we want to measure. Okay, so which do we want? Vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles? So, kung vertical rectangles, kailangan natin ng subregions kasi dito, kailangan natin yung sa tangent line and then yung x-axis and then at this subregion, kailangan natin yung tangent line and then yung parabola. Then remember kapag kapag vertical rectangles yung functions natin in terms of y. Okay? So kung mag-horizontal rectangles tayo naman, wala isang region lang kasi ang height ng rectangle natin will depend on the 
function for the parabola and then yung function for the tangent line. So, mas maganda na mag horizontal rectangles tayo for this region. And then, again, remember, kapag horizontal, yung functions natin are in terms of y. Itong parabola, maganda na siya kasi nakasulat na siya as x expressed as in terms of y. And then yung equation of the tangent line, sinulat na natin na x equals 2y minus y. Okay, so it looks like mas maganda na mag horizontal rectangles tayo. So, ang definite integral na masolve natin ay ang bound ng y ay 0, y equals 0, and then y equals 1. And then, ang height ng rectangle ay yung function for the parabola minus the function for the tangent line. So, that's y squared minus 2y minus 1. Yeah, and then integrating this, we get 1 third y cubed. And then yung negative 2y integrating, we get negative y squared. And then plus 1 here, so magiging plus y. Evaluate natin sa bounds na y equals 0 to y equals 1. Yung 0, mag 0 out lang talaga. So when it is 1, we get 1 third minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 third square unit. So, one third square unit yung area ng region. So, I hope that's clear. Let's go to the next example. Find the area of the region bounded by y equals 5 minus x squared, y equals 2x plus 2, and y equals negative x minus 1. Okay, so for this problem, matatest talaga yung skills natin sa paggraph ano identify muna natin kung anong klase ba yung mga mag-graph natin from the given equations like for the first one y equals 5 minus x squared that is a parabola facing downward with vertex at uh, 0, 5 on the y-axis no? and then the other two those are lines nakasulat na of the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So, i-graph natin itong y equals 2x plus 2. Kailangan nyo lang yung slope and a point or two points. Try kayo maghanap ng points dito sa line na to. Or yung y-intercept dahil naka y equals mx plus b, ang y-intercept nga is 2. So, may point siya sa 0, 2. And then, Pwede maghanap ng other point or using the slope, i-graph na natin yung y equals 2x plus 2. And then, similarly, yung y equals negative x minus 1, apply natin ng same techniques. May slope na negative 1, so slanting to the left, and then my y-intercept at negative 1. So, ganyan yung graph niya. And then, yung parabola na lang. Okay, so, ma-imagine na natin na ito ang area na kailangan nating ma-compute. Now, next thing to do, kailangan natin yung points of intersection. Bakit? Kasi kailangan nating malaman yung precise na bounds na gagamit, gagamitin natin sa pag-setup ng definite integrals. So, solve na natin yung points of intersection. First, yung sa parabola na y equals 5 minus x squared tsaka sa line na y equals 2x plus 2. Paano natin makakuha yung points of intersection nila? Equate lang natin. Kaya set sa so we can get na 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Factoring we get x plus 3 times x minus 1 and then ang roots nyan ay negative 3 and 1. So when x is negative 3, a substitute lang ulit natin sa any of those, pwede nyo sa parabola or just sa line na kinonsider natin. When x is negative 3, y is negative 4. When x is 1, y is 4. Pero hindi natin kailangan yung negative 3, negative 4 kasi nasan ba yan? Nandito yan sa part na to. So wala siyang kinalaman dun sa sa region na na-form. 
natin. So, kailangan lang natin yung 1, 4, and root 2. Yung point na yun, now, yung points of intersection ng parabola and yung line negative x minus 1, uh, makukuha natin na ang intersection nila ay 3, negative 4, and negative 2, 1. So, yung 3, negative 4, again, hindi siya kailangan kasi nandito yun. Wala siyang kinalaman sa sa region. So, kailangan natin yung negative 2, 1, and then, last, ano yung intersection ng dalawang line? So, yung 2x plus 2 and yung negative x minus 1. Solving for x, we can get x is equal to negative 1. So, merong point at negative 1, 0. Okay, so, yun yung points of intersection. Now, the question is, ano yung best method na magagamit natin. Magagamit pa tayo ng vertical or horizontal rectangles. Okay, so kung vertical rectangles, kailangan ba nating mag-form ng subregions? Yes, kasi yung vertical rectangles sa area na to, ang function na involved ay yung function for the parabola and yung function sa line na 2x plus 2. And then, dito sa region na to, yung parabola and yung line ah, dito pala ay yung parabola and line negative x minus 1 and then dito yung parabola and 2x plus 2. So, meron tayong dalawang subregion. Kung gagamit ba tayo ng horizontal rectangles, ilang subregions yung kailangan natin? kailangan natin ng tatlo kasi i-divide natin siya dito sa y equals 4 and then dito sa y equals 1. Kasi dito sa part na to, yung horizontal rectangle will depend on the function for the branches, bra different branches, left and right branches nung, nung parabola. And then dito sa middle subregion will depend on the parabola and yung line 2x plus 2 and then lastly dito sa maliit na region na to will, it will depend on the two lines okay so meron tatlong region for the horizontal so knowing that pipiliin natin na mag solve ng area of the region using yung vertical rectangles magpo-form lang tayo ng dalawang subregions r1 and r2 okay so let's go ahead and set up the definite integral for R1, for the area of R1. So, ano yung bounds natin? Bounds natin, since vertical rectangles, ang kailangan natin ay bounds sa x. So, x equals negative 2 up to x equals negative 1. Okay. And then, yung function for the parabola and yung function for the line negative x minus 1. Okay, so ito yung definite integral for the area of R1. Integral of 5 minus x squared minus the quantity negative x minus 1. And then ang bounds negative 2 to negative 1. Let's simplify. We get negative x squared plus x plus 6. Okay, and then let's integrate get negative one third x cubed plus one half x squared plus six x and then ang bounds evaluate natin from x equals negative two to x equals negative one okay so substitute lang natin ang evaluate when we substitute negative one we get one third and then here when substitute negative one we get one half and then negative six when we substitute negative 2, we get negative 8. We get positive 8 thirds, pero iba minus pa yun, kaya naging negative dito. And then here, we get 2, so negative 2 here, and then negative 12, so positive 12 here. And then add lang natin yung, yung mga nakuha natin, we get 13 over x. 13 over 6 square units. Now, for R2, 
ang function na bibigay ng height ng rectangle ay yung function ng parabola and yung function sa line 2x2. So, and then ang bounds natin, x equals negative 1 up to x equals 1. So, we get this definite integral, 5 minus x squared minus the quantity 2x plus 2. Simplifying, we get yung integral ng negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay? And then, let's integrate this one. We get negative 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus 3x and then evaluated from negative 1 to 1. So, when x is equal to 1, we get negative 1 third minus 1 plus 3. And then, when we substitute negative 1, we get even minus pa yun. So, negative 1 third here. And then, here we get minus so minus negative 1 so plus 1 minus negative 3 so plus 3 and then adding all of this we get 16 over 3 square units for R2 so let's add yung area na nakuha natin for R1 and for R2 16 over 3 plus uh, 13 over 6 plus 16 over 3 so that is itong 16 over 3 pwede siyang 32 over 6 so 45 over 6 which is just 7.5 square units okay so this is the last problem on area of the region the next problem will be computing arc length Find the arc length of the following curves in the specified interval. Okay, so in first one, we have y equals 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 5 raised to 3 halves from x equals 6 to x equals 8. Okay, so in solving arc length, actually, in the, most of the time, hindi na natin kailangan i-graph yung yung graph nung given function let's say we can solve just from from the function using the formula kasi ang difference dun sa pag solve ng area of the plane region kailangan talaga natin ma-visualize yung yung region para alam natin kung gagamit ba tayo ng vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangle so kailangan igra para makita yung yung region dito so nilagay lang natin para makita nyo kung ano yung actual na itsura nung nung pinapa pinapa solve na arc length pero hindi talaga natin kailangan igra kasi ang gagawin lang natin ay i-compute yung dy dx from the given function so since we have this function ang derivative nyan ay 2 thirds times 3 halves that's 1 lang so and then 3 halves wasa natin ng 1 so magiging x minus 5 raised to 1 half so the square root of x minus 5 so gamitin natin yung formula for the arc length that is uh, square root of 1 plus yung dy dx which is na compute natin to be square root of x minus 5 squared so Ito na yung function sa loob ng integral. Ang bounds natin for the integral ay from x equals 6 to x equals 8. Note na ang pag-solve natin sa arc length na to ay in terms of x. So kapag in terms of x, kukompute natin yung dy dx and then apply the formula. And then, yung integral is in terms of x. So, yung bounds natin ay nasa x. So, yung x ay from 6 to 8. Pero kung ang function natin ay, ang kukunin natin ay dx dy, so, yung function dapat in terms of 
y. So, yung integ- integral in terms of y, so yung bounds na kailangan na- natin ay yung bounds ay nasa y. So, yun yung other other case. So, actually, itong arc length na to, pwede rin natin isolve sa perspective ng y, in terms of y. Okay. So, anyway, i-continue natin yung pag-solve ng, ng integral para makuha natin yung actual measure ng arc length. So, simplifying ang square root ng square root of x minus 5, ang square niyan is just x minus 5. So, plus 1, that's x minus 4. So, if we have something, if we have square root of x minus 4, ano ang integral nito? Ang integral lang yan ay ang 2 thirds times x minus 4 raised to 3 halves. Pwede kayong mag-substitution dito, mag-solve ng integral by substitution, let u be x minus 4. So, yung du natin will be equal to dx. And then, mapapansin nyo na wala namang talaga madadagdag na factor. Kasi ang derivative ng x minus 4 is just 1. So, du is equal to dx. So, walang factor na madadagdag. So, parang, in a sense, inintegrate natin to nasa loob ng square root as if isang variable lang siya. ba Kasi ang integral ng square root of x, dahil x raised to 1 half siya, ang integral niya ay x raised to 3 halves over 3 halves. So, dahil derivative ng x minus 4 ay 1 lang, so, ang integral ng square root of x minus 4 ay quantity x minus 4 raised to 3 halves over 3 halves. So, kaya tayo may 2 thirds dito sa may 2 thirds na factor yan yung over 3 halves. Okay, so that's a faster way to integrate kapag ang derivative ng nasa loob ng square root function ay just 1. So, hindi, kahit hindi nyo na idaan sa substitution. Okay, so now this, itong na-compute na- natin, evaluate natin from 6 to 8. When x is 8, we get 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 raised to 3 halves is square root of 4 cubed. So square root of 4 is 2, so 2 cubed is 8. We get 16 over 3. And then when x is 6, we get 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 raised to 3 halves is square root of 2 cubed, or by square root of 8. So that's 2 square root of 2 times 2. That's 4 square root of 2. So we have 4 square root of 2 over 3. So ito na yung arc length. The arc length is equal to 16 over 3 minus 4 square root of 2 over 3 units. Okay, so for our next example, 2x minus 4y plus 6 equals 0 from y equals 0 to y equals 2. So ito yung uh, graph natin. So yung given na uh, equation is an equation of the line of a line and then itong nakatrace na blue yun lang yung yung arc or yung part ng line na gusto nating i-measure kung ano yung length nito yun yung nahanap natin okay kasi yan yung from y equals 0 to y equals 2 okay so kung pipiliin natin na ang bounds ng definite integral natin ay nasa y from 0 to 2 so dapat yung function na nasa loob ng integral should be in terms of y so instead na dy dx na i-compute natin i-compute natin yung dx dy kung pipiliin natin na ang bounds ay nasa y pero pwede pa rin naman na piliin natin na ang bounds ay nasa x pero measure pa rin natin yung same na arc length kasi Gusto natin itong arc length na to, na from y equals 0 to y equals 2. So, pwede naman na instead, from x equals negative 3 to x equals 1. So, kung ganun, ang kukompute natin ay dy dx, and ang ilalagay sa bounds nga ay, ang definite integral ay negative 3 to 1. Okay, so, gawin natin yung bounds na nasa y from y equals 0 to y equals 2. So, kailangan natin ng function na in terms of y. 
So from 2x minus 4y plus 6 equals 0, by that I express yung x in terms of y, so x is equal to 2y minus 3. Now dx dy is equal to 2 from this equation. So yung arc length natin, applying the formula, which is equal to square root of 1 plus yung dx dy, which is 2 squared. So in terms of y, yung integral natin, so ang bounds na from 0 to 2. So computing this integral, we get square root of 5. This is a constant lang, kaya square root of 5y here, and then evaluate from 0 to 2. So we get 2 square root of 5 units yung arc length natin. Okay, so punta sa next examples. We have y equals ln of cosine x from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 4. Okay, so kuya natin yung dy dx. dy dx is equal to derivative ng ln is 1 over yung nasa loob ng ln cosine x. Then by chain rule times derivative ng cosine x is negative sine x. So this is equal to negative tangent of x. So applying the formula for the arc length, the arc length L is equal to square root of 1 plus in dy dx natin is negative tangent x, so that is squared, and then bounded from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so simplifying, we get square root of 1 plus tangent squared x, and then using our Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x. So square root of secant squared x is the secant of x and the integral of secant of x is ln absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. Now evaluate this from 0 to pi over 4. Let's substitute. And then minus when x equals 0. Okay, secant of pi over 4 is square root of 2. Correct. And then tangent of pi over 4 is just 1. Secant of 0 is 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. So ln of 1 is 0. So therefore, the arc length has measured ln of the absolute value square root of 2 plus 1 units. We have 9y squared equals 4x cubed from the origin to the point 3 to square root of 3. Okay, so ito yung graph ng 9y squared equals 4x cubed. And ito nakatrace sa blue yung gusto natin i-measure kung ano yung length. Now, pwede natin piliin kung ano yung bounds natin para sa definite integral, either nasa x or nasa y. If nasa x, ang bounds natin ay x equals 0 to x equals 3. Kung nasa y, y equals 0 to y equals 2 square root of 3. Now, depende sa kung anong pinili natin, kung anong pipiliin nating bounds, kung dy dx or dx dy yung compute natin. It follows na, for example, kung pipili nating bounds ay nasa x, so kailangan na yung function na nasa loob ng definite integral ay in terms of x. So kailangan natin compute yung dy dx. So from the equation 9y squared equals 4x cubed, express natin yung y in terms of x. So y is equal to plus or minus 2 thirds times x raised to 3 halves. So, bakit plus or minus? Kasi yung plus 2 thirds x raised to 3 halves, yun yung upper branch nitong graph. And then yung negative part, when this is negative, yun yung lower branch ng graph. Okay, so alin ba yung kailangan natin yung upper or yung lower? Now, obviously, kitang kita sa graph na yung upper branch yung pipiliin natin. Kasi nandun yung yung arc na kailangan natin i-measure from the origin to the point 3 and 2 square root of 3. Now, kung hindi natin nakikita yung graph, pwede na naman natin i-verify 
kung itong point na 3 to square root of 3 nasa aling nasa aling equation siya nasa positive 1 or nasa negative so ang pipiliin natin yung upper 1 kasi 2 square root of 3 yun yung y is equal to 2 thirds times 3 raised to 3 halves so, ayan so nasa satisfy niya yung equation ng upper branch. So, nasa upper branch talaga siya. So, yun yung kailangan natin i-test kung hindi natin nakikita itong graph. So, let's compute dy dx. dy dx is equal to x raised to 1 half. So, the arc length using, using the formula is square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. So, in dy dx natin ay x raised to 1 half. And ang bounds natin ay nasa x from 0 to 3. So, x raised to 1 half squared is equal to just x. So, we have x is equal to the integral of square root of 1 plus x bounded from 0 to 3. So, gamitin natin yung technique in integrating a square root function when yung nasa loob ay with derivative 1. So, ang integral, ang integral nito ay 2 thirds times 1 plus x raised to 3 halves. Evaluate natin from 0 to 3. When x is 3, this is 1 plus d equals 4. 4 raised to 3 halves is square root of 4 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8 times 2, that is 16. So 16 over 3. And when x is 0, this is just 2 thirds. So we get 14 over 3 units. So, ito yung length nitong natitrace sa graph from 0, 0 to the point 3 and 2 square root of 3. Now, we have another problem. This time, hindi na pinapacompute yung yung actual measure nung arc length, ang instruction lang ay to set up a definite integral that gives the length of the arc sine function throughout its domain. So, set up lang tayo. Kapag na-set up na natin definite integral, we're done. Okay, so, ito yung graph ng arc sine function. Again, hindi naman natin talaga kailangan i-graph, but you know, it's here para mag-visualize natin. So, Ang domain ng arc sine ay from negative 1 to 1. So, sabi daw, set up natin definite integral. It gives the length throughout the entire domain of arc sine. So, kukunin natin yung length ng arc from negative 1 to 1. So, let's compute dy dx or f prime. If f f is the arc sine function then f prime on derivative ng arc sine is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared so we have f prime applying the formula for arc length that is equal to square root of 1 plus yung f prime natin 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared that is square by to and then ang bound natin ay negative 1 to 1 Okay, dahil ang bounds natin ay sa x. Okay, so that's it for this question. Kailangan lang naman ng setup we don't need to compute or to, uh, to simplify or to compute the actual measure. Okay, so finally, we have one last example. Set up a definite integral that gives the arc length of y equals cube root of x minus 1 from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Note that this integral has to be set up in terms of y. Y not x. Okay, so to answer yung question sa note, itry muna natin na i-solve or i-set up in terms of x. So let's try ano kaya yung magiging problema. So we have the function y equals cube root of x minus 1 that's already expressed in terms of x. Now computing for dy dx, 
that is equal to 1 third times x minus 1 raised to negative 2 thirds. And then, sinulat lang natin into a fraction form, 1 over 3 times cube root of the quantity x minus 1 squared. So that is dy dx. Now, using the formula for the arc length, ang arc length natin dapat ay square root of 1 plus in dy dx, which is 1 over 3 cube root of x minus 1 squared, and then squared. And then bounded yung integral from 0 to 1. Okay, so, ano yung problem na nag arise sa pag-setup natin ng integral na to? Okay? Ang mali dito ay yung bound. May mali sa bound. Well, kasi hindi mag-make sense yung definite integral. This is actually not a definite integral kasi kung mapapansin nyo, yung 1 wala siya sa domain ng function na to. Okay, 1 is not in the domain of this function. And important for a definite integral, for us to be able to define a definite integral, dapat yung yung bounds here, yung interval here, dapat nasa domain. Entire interval dapat nasa domain ng function na nasa loob ng definite integral. But, it turns out na yung 1 magiging undefined dito dahil mag zero yung denominator nito. So, wala siya sa domain and hindi siya, hindi ito isang definite integral. Okay, so, Dahil hindi ito definite integral, hindi ito yung tamang pag-setup ng integral na magbibigay ng arc length, itry natin na i-set up in terms of y. So, ito na yung graph natin. So, setting up in terms of y, yung y equals q root of x minus 1, pwede natin express as x equals y cubed plus 1. So, ang dx dy natin is 3y squared. So, using the formula for the arc length, that is square root of 1 plus 3y squared quantity squared. Ito na yung function nasa loob ng definite integral. Now, paano yung bounds? Ang original bounds natin for x is x equals 0 to x equals 1. Dito, when, sa graph, when x equals 0, y equals negative 1. And when x equals 1, y equals 0. So, ang bounds natin ay na nasa y na ay from negative 1 to 0. Okay, so ito yung, ito ay isang valid na pag-setup ng definite integral. Magbibigay ng arc length na hinahanap natin sa problem. Okay, so another note na lang din, kung mapapansin nyo sa graph dito sa point na 1, 0, ano yung tangent line to the graph at this point? Yun ay isang vertical line. Kaya doon nag-arise yung problem sa setting up in terms of x kasi kung vertical line, hindi nag -e exist yung slope. So, hindi nag -e exist yung dy dx dito sa point na to. Ayan, dito na nagdatapos ang ating video. Maraming salamat sa panonood.